Hello, my name is Brendan Wayne and my presentation will be on the current building categories and house types that are present in the UK and how national organisations survey and classify them. Of the approximate 27 million households that are residing in the UK, there are five main general types that are used by both professional organisations that work in the housing industry and also by the general public. The first of which is a detached house. These single standing properties do not share any walls with any neighbouring houses and tend to cover a larger area of land and generally are of a bigger size than any other house type. Due to this, it is common for these properties to be of the higher end of the price market. The second type of houses are semi detached. These properties consist of a pair of houses joined together by a common wall while the other side of the house is detached. Semi-detached houses are the most common type of house in the UK market, making up approximately 27% of all living properties in the UK. Their price range is generally lower than that, than that of detached properties as they tend to occupy a smaller area of land and are less sizable, therefore making these houses typically affordable for the majority of homeowners. The following properties are known as terraces in which a given house is situated amongst a long row of houses either as a mid-terrace or an end-terrace property. The mid-terrace houses share common wall with both neighbouring properties, while an end-terrace house is not dissimilar to a semi-detached house in the fact that it has a detached wall. These houses tend to be on the cheaper end of living properties and are an ideal choice for groups of families such as, such as families. Flats are the next type of property. They are not considered houses but do have the same service of providing residential space for homeowners. Flats, along with apartments, are the properties that are most likely to be rented. A good example would be for postgraduates, and that tend to be a, a cheaper option in the, housing in the housing market. The following type of housing is known as a bungalow. These single-storey properties can be built either detached or semi-detached, similar to a two-storey building, and are generally one of the cheap housing options in the UK. This leads on to how national and international organisations further classify houses through investigation and evaluation, through their thermal performance, structural stability and air tightness, which is the uncontrolled leaking of outdoor air through un unintentional openings within a building. For this presentation, I have outlined the findings of four leading, four leading institutions in house categorization and energy efficiency. The first of which is the Department of Energy and Climate Change, or DECC, which has a defined purpose of securing the UK with clean and affordable energy support supplies as well as to promote international action to mitigate climate change. A report written by Brooke Winhurst in November 2012 showed findings regarding energy usage in different households using a sample of 70 semi-detached three bedroom properties. The initial categorization involved four factors, the age of the householders, their family status, the income and the age of the property. In terms of property itself, the age of the house would be noted and be grouped in one of three sections either built before 1920, between 1920 and 1980, and built, and built after 1980. There were also categorisation of the gas usage of these households with the top and bottom D style being labelled as high and low gas users respectively. Windhurst highlights three main factors which affected energy consumption in housing. Temperature management and energy awareness of the homeowners, the, num the number of residents and their day-to-day -day lives and the physical properties of the home. In the interviews performed for this report, most homeowners did not fully understand how their heating systems operated and merely adjusted them to make the house at a comfortable temperature. Energy usage between households appeared to vary simply due to some residents preferring their home at a higher temperature. High gas users on average showed generally higher temperatures in their household compared to low gas users with room temperatures differing between 2 to 4 degrees centigrade. The residents in the home, such as young children or the elderly, tended to show a higher temperature in the household in which these occupants were present, and visitors also varied this temperature, but overall didn't affect the energy usage significantly. In terms of physical properties of these homes, high gas users tended to have lower efficiency homes than low gas users due to the setup of the property, such as inclusion of insulation and window double glazing. Following this is an EPC, or an Energy Performance Certificate which is used to measure both the energy efficiency and the environmental impact of a domestic property by taking into account several factors but assuming it as an SAP or a standard assessment procedure score. The energy efficiency rating is a measure of the overall efficiency of a home. The higher the rating, the more energy efficient the home is and the lower the fuel, bu the fuel bills are likely to be. The environmental impact rating is a measure of the home's impact on the environment in terms of carbon dioxide emissions, 
the higher the rating, the less impact it has on the environment. Well, examples of the factors analysed and measured in order to produce the EPC of a given property are the presence of loft, in, loft insulation, a domestic boiler, a hot water tank, radiators and windows with triple or triple or double grazing. Next is the National Education Development Project or NEED um, project, which focuses on promoting an energy conscious and educated society by encouraging people such as students and professors to promote and create energy education programmes. According to a secondary info book published by the NEED project, research performed showed that there were four main factors in which householders can consider to include, the, to include in their properties to reduce energy uses and therefore costs in their property. Maintenance, simple checkups from qualified technicians annually can spot potentially faulty equipment which can then, which can then be repaired and can save a large amount of money. Programmable thermostats, the, this inclusion of a simple piece of equipment can be used with both heating and cooling systems and can lower energy uses appreciably. Insulation, simple, simple addition to house insulation can prevent additional heat energy from escaping and is important to an energy efficient home. Finally, there's caulking and weather stripping. Preventing the exchange of inside air with outside air is very important. Weather stripping and caulking around doors and windows can significantly reduce air leakage. Keeping windows and doors closed when systems are oper operating is also a necessity. Finally, there's a building research establishment of the BRE which has used its resources to be able to categorise the stability and safety of a given property by measuring the width of cracks within its infrastructure. It has given guidelines to six categories of cracks and any necessary action required. Category 1 in which cracks are less than 0.1 of a millimetre across, uh, which are classed as negligible and no action is required for these for houses in this situation. Grade, grade 1, up to 1 millimetre, damage generally restricted to internal wall finishes and cracks are rarely visible in external brickwork. Category 2, in which cracks are up to 5 millimetres, they are not visible, the cracks are not visible externally. Some external repointing may be required to ensure weather tightness. Doors and windows may stick slightly and require easing and adjusting. Category 3, with 5 to 15 millimetres, the crack width. Doors and windows may stick, service pipes may fracture and weather tightness is often impaired. Category 4, in which the cracks are between 15 and 25 millimetres, structural and extensive damage which requires breaking out and replacing section of walls, especially over doors and windows. Windows and door frames distorted and floors and sloping noticeably. Walls leaning or building noticeably, some loss of bearing and beams, service pipes are disrupted. And finally, category 5, in which cracks are larger than 25 millimetres, structural damage that requires a major repair job involving partial or complete rebuild rebuilding. Beams losing bearing, walls being badly and require shoring, windows broken with distortion and dangerous instability. Research of house classification and energy efficiency by these organisations along with that of dozens more shows the potential for saving energy in general households and also the amount of, energy, amount of money continued research can save in our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you for listening.